Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving gathering with family and friends and enjoy that time together. What a special day that typically is each and every year. And so today, as we wrap up our church year, we move into this Sunday known as a Christ the King Sunday. From the world's point of view, what is a king? Today, England still has a semblance of a kingly rule. However, it's just a shadow of what it once was. When Henry VIII was king, he brought peace into his area through various means of executions and fear tactics. But even he had to realize that English law was beginning to take hold and he was starting to feel the pressure of not just doing his own thing but having to listen to others. And the Pope got involved in that as well as he wanted him to tone down what he was doing. But kings, they rule with the sword. Charlemagne united the kingdom of Europe by the sword. The strongest kings through history were the Caesars of the Holy Roman Empire. That republic, again, was ruled by the sword. That's what kings do. They rule with power and might, and what the world expects kings to do is to rule with power and might, to destroy enemies, to set up powerful rule. But Jesus, kingly rule, doesn't follow this pattern of the world. He rules very unlike every other king. Jesus turns to be a great disappointment. We expect the king to rule, not to serve. Jesus failed to live up to the world's demands. He had no army. He had no contrived plan to crush rebellion. He had no palace or royal court. He didn't take nations and he didn't force anyone to grovel at his feet. What kind of a king is this anyway? He served his servants. Even his inner circle, his own disciples, did not know how to help him. He rejected all their attempts to make him rule. The common people tried to force Jesus to take over the kingdom by being their bread king, but he refused and instead offered them an eternal kingdom. The church officials confronted Jesus to prove that he was a king and although he performed many signs and miracles that were recorded by the prophets down through the ages to show that he was the Messiah King, he refused to conform to their ideas on what it meant to be a king. They chose Caesar instead, and to make sure, they had Jesus put to death. Jesus' own disciples could not understand why he would not allow them to fight for him. They couldn't understand why he would go to Jerusalem where he would be put to death. He did not act kingly, so one of them even betrayed Jesus, and the rest ran and hid. The civil government did not fear Jesus' rule. Although Pilate couldn't find any fault in Jesus that would have him executed, he still approved the execution of Jesus because it was a safe and easy thing to do to deal with Jesus. On all accounts, Jesus failed to fulfill the world's expectation of who a king is and what a king is to do. They saw Jesus as an enemy even though he came to save the world from sin. Everyone rejected Jesus. The Jewish nation, the religious leaders, Pilate, Jesus' first disciples. But we also have to add you and me as well, don't we? Because we too don't love him with our whole heart, soul, strength, and mind. Yet Jesus fulfilled the rule to rule perfectly. He came to defeat sin and Satan once and for all, and he did this completely. To establish his kingdom, Jesus went to the cross, and on the cross, he opened the kingdom of heaven to everyone, to you and me and everyone we know. That was what his father had designed him to do from the very beginning. When first sin first entered the world with Adam and Eve, Jesus, or God determined that his son Jesus would have to then bring about peace on earth. And he announces that in the text today when Jesus says, this is the reason I was born. He came to die. 
Although Jesus reigns eternally, he was born of Mary, to become like us in every way except without sin. To pay for our sin, he humbled himself to become sin for us. He took on himself the sin of the world and paid the entire price and proved his defeat over sin by rising on the third day. Earthly kings destroy traitors. Jesus came to die for his traitors, that they might have life in his name. Jesus came to save those who reject him and who fail daily to live up to his perfection that he demands of all. For Jesus' life and death, he exposes the truth about this world and its rulers. There is no world power or rule. All governments and earthly leaders end up dying, and their supposedly strong kingdoms fail in the long run as well. Jesus showed us how weak we really are by offering himself on the cross, for it's at the cross that we see how sinful our lives are and the struggle we have to find power and fame and wealth. The cross of Jesus reveals to us how absurd our philosophies and solutions really are. Have we been able to bring about world peace? Not at all. Jesus declares the truth so that we will not miss it. He came that we might have life in his name. To our sin, he extends his body and blood to forgive us, and to make us one with another. We have a reminder here before us each and every week as we gather, the baptismal font. Through it, we see how Jesus rules. He comes to wash away our sins. And he reminds us that because of that washing, we are transformed into the very people of God. In spite of all of our failures and following him, he continues to forgive us. And he makes us citizens of heaven for all eternity. To this world, it looked like King Jesus was destroyed. But on the third day, he proved that his rule had just begun and that he would use it to transform the lives of sinners into saints, time and again, by the power of the cross. When Lee Strobel uh, started studying about Jesus, he was an agnostic. But as he continued to read about all the witnesses to whom Jesus showed himself after his resurrection, he was totally transformed by that. In fact, he wrote down that if everyone in the Bible who was a witness of Jesus, were given 15 minutes to testify to what they saw and heard after Jesus' resurrection, it would take five straight days, day and night, for all of them to speak. He had to conclude, therefore, that it's impossible to deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, Christ came to do what we could not do for ourselves to take away everything that separates us from God and turn us into the very family of God. It is here that there are no Jews, no Greeks, no slaves, no free, all belong. His death has lifted you and me from the kingdom of this world into the very presence of God. Today he says to you and me, I will never leave you or forsake you. Come into the kingdom I have prepared for you. Amen. And now may that peace that surpasses our human understanding <coughs> keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Would you please stand with